Day is just days away. And if you're looking for a gift, consider the gift of health. Good morning, I'm Jessica Lovell and welcome to the Morning Medical Update. We want to keep our dads around for as many Father's Days as possible, and that starts with good health. Wellness exams are important for maintaining that healthy lifestyle. Checkups help create a clearer picture of your health for physicians over time. And in fact, you should be visiting your doctor even when you're feeling great. We'll dive into all of that and tell you why here in just a moment. But first, let's get to our morning rounds. 39th Street looks a little different thanks to renovations to our emergency department. There's a new drop off entrance at the corner of 39th and Cambridge, but that is just part of a bigger project to overhaul our emergency department. The emergency department's medical director, Dr. Ken Marshall, is here with us to tell us more about what these changes are and what they mean. Good morning, Dr. Marshall. How are you? Oh, yeah, it's good, good to be here. I'm doing great. Good to see you. So first, just tell us why were these renovations so necessary? Uh, really, basically, we had outgrown our, our previous space. Uh, so, um, you know, we have a lot of patients uh, in, in the emergency department. We're constantly growing. And uh, so before COVID, we only really had about uh, 45 treatment spaces in the ED. And even now, uh, after just phase one completing, uh, we have about 62, and that's going to continue to grow as construction goes on. So that was really the biggest reason, but there are a bunch of other um, kind of ancillary benefits that we see um, as we got the opportunity to redesign the ED and put, put more kind of current design philosophies in place. So renovations, as you mentioned, they're happening in phases. The first phase is now complete. So you mentioned, but what changed with that phase one? Of course, more space and area and, and a different place to drop off. Right, yeah. So again, more, more rooms for one, uh, but we completely changed the way that patients will come into the emergency department. So if patients arriving by EMS will still come in the previous um, EMS entrance, which hasn't changed, but uh, now patients will be dropped off on 39th Street. There's a new carve, carve out for uh, cars to drop off patients. They'll actually come in on the ground level and uh, enter by uh, an elevator up to triage on the first floor. Um, and so it'll be a, a new arrival experience for our patients. So what do you think will be the biggest impact for patients? Uh, you know, kind of the good, the bad, is there anything um, that they should be expecting um, well, as far the, as this goes? One of the biggest changes is that our rooms are bigger. Um, on our previous configuration from our design that opened in 2016, there were a lot of uh, curtain spaces that were sort of a legacy model of de designing emergency departments. Um, once com uh, construction is complete, all of our uh, bed spaces will have uh, not curtains, but instead with doors, uh, bigger rooms uh, that are fully featured, which given our patient complexity is uh, going to be much better for patients. Also, a lot of our rooms are now going to have natural light, which we know is better for patients uh, on the inpatient setting. So we decided let's go ahead and apply the same logic to our patients in the emergency department. So natural light, bigger rooms, I think it's going to be a much better uh, experience for our patients. Yeah, who can complain about that for sure. Now, will that be the only entrance? They will no longer be using any of the other entrances or will they have two, a couple of options? That's a great question. Yeah. So if they're being dropped off by private vehicle, um, they, most of the time they'll be using our 39th Street entrance. However, they'll still be able to access the emergency department um, through the main hospital entrance uh, coming through the, the Cambridge Cafe like they have been able to do. Mm -hmm. um, so between the two patient drop offs, which would be the main hospital entrance or the emergency department entrance on 39th Street, or then if you're unlucky enough to be coming in by ambulance, that's obviously a third way. Right. We don't want you here, but right. if you have to be here, we're trying to make the experience as good as possible. And just before we let you go, what's the future phases? What do they look like? Uh, more rooms, essentially. Um, we do have uh, in phase two, which will start in November, uh, we'll start getting uh, basically larger resuscitation rooms, which we needed for a long time. Uh, a lot of times we have multi-disciplinary uh, teams in. Uh, and so having a, a large rooms when you have very sick patients, that's going to be a, a huge advantage for us. Um, more rooms with natural light um, and so uh, and, and just more space. Those, those, that's what's coming in November and then other phases. More space to take care of our sick patients. And uh, we'll see you back here, Dr. Marshall, after phase two is complete. Sound good? Sounds good. All right. Have a great one. All right. Well, your doctors, they will be there for you when you're sick. We know that. But the more information they have on your health overall, the easier it is to see when something goes is wrong. We are joined this morning here at the table by internal medicine specialist, Dr. Jennifer McCray. Good morning. Morning. Good to see you. Along with two of her patients, Jack and Beth Becky Seltzer. Hello, how are you? Good fine. morning, fine. Good to see fine. you fine folks with us today. Dr. McCray, let's just jump in and tell us what steps should men in particular be taking to prioritize their health. It's all about fathers this month and mm -hmm. we're, we're celebrating Father's Day, but what do they need to be doing? 
I think um, some of the, the basic things, and I will always say these are, if you're smoking, to quit smoking. Um, and to stay active. So walking um, can do a lot to maintain your health. That's gonna then keep your heart healthy. It's gonna give your body a certain like reservoir of wellness so that if you do get sick, it, you've got maybe more area to get sick before you get really, really sick. Um, for men specifically, I think it's paying attention to the risk factors for heart disease and stroke, which would be blood pressure, um, cholesterol, eating a heart healthy diet, those sorts of things will go a long way to keeping you healthy for a very long time. Well, it's taking the control of the things that you can do daily, right? Yes, yeah, you can't stop aging, so you gotta take care, you've gotta manage the other things you can manage. Absolutely, so talk to us about what is called a wellness visit, because that is a specific type of doctor's visit and it's defined by Medicare. Mm -hmm. So what is supposed to be happening at these wellness visits? Yeah, so the Medicare annual wellness visit is specifically for people who have Medicare and there's a version that's your welcome to Medicare for your first year on Medicare and then every year subsequently after that you have a Medicare annual wellness visit. This is a questionnaire that Medicare sort of lays out where we talk about not just your health and your risk factors but things that um, let feed into social determinants of health, your diet, um, your level of independence, home safety, advanced directives, things like that. And that really is then a comprehensive look at all the things that can affect your health um, and gives us a good sort of idea of where you are at that visit. It doesn't actually necessarily include a physical exam. So Medicare doesn't pay for an annual physical. Mm -hmm. Now if you have a, a commercial supplement to your insurance, they will. Uh, most providers and physicians will do a physical as part of the annual wellness visit because we can't help it. We've got to listen to your heart and lungs and make sure everything is healthy. But for, for Medicare patients, there isn't necessarily a physical. And for people who are, are younger on um, non-Medicare insurance, there is an idea of an annual physical, which obviously includes wellness as well, but that's a little less scripted. And that's where there's a physical exam and checking someone's vitals and going over all of those screenings and vaccines and labs and things that we need to do to make sure someone's healthy. So does that mean they need two separate appointments? The wellness visit isn't technically enough? They need to take it further? It depends on your provider. So in our clinic, we've been combining our Medicare annual wellness visit with a physical exam and doing both of those. And for our younger patients, you can you can do your annual physical um, all in one visit. But there are some instances where we do have to separate them into two visits if a patient's very complex or um, we do the wellness visit, the questionnaire over like a telehealth, and then we get somebody to come back in for the physical exam. Sometimes we have to do that. Yeah, and then you'll go from there. Yeah. So Jack and Becky, you have been well, your first year Dr. McCray's patients, but you have been married for 50 years. You have, uh, well, I want to see a picture of you, this gorgeous family you have because you have three children, 13 grandchildren, um, a pretty incredible number up there. Uh, you both get your checkups together. So which one of you takes the lead on that? Of course, I knew you were going to point to your, <laughs> I knew you were going to point to the lady. Um, so tell us about, um, about that. Just how, when you guys talk about that, and Becky, he says you're the one who takes the lead. Um, I'm not sure I understand. You want to know why we do it? Yeah, why we do just, it? and just making sure that Jack shows up where he's supposed to be. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah. And I'm he, here today because of her. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I love it. Well, he's right. had a few uh, issues like with uh, uh, heart mm -hmm. arrhythmia and um, uh, two hips and some other things. And so it's very important that he get in and be and keep a maintenance. And for me, it's essential because I would never go to the doctor if it wasn't required. But because it's required, I do. Really? Okay. You know, because I didn't grow up going to doctors and, you know. But it's paid off. Yes. I mean, look at oh you, too. Oh, my gosh. It's paid yes. off. So, yes. Jack, does she have to mm -hmm. pull you along yes. or what? Oh, yes. Well, uh, no. I, I, yes. The, this wellness uh, uh, checkup, it is really good because I, it's automatic pilot. I mean, all I have to do is show up, and the questions are there. And what it what it does is, I mean, it, it comes across things that you know I never think of. Right. Yeah. You know, and and you know sometimes, and usually there's some suggestion about part of my health that that really relevant. 
And I appreciate that. I mean, I really do. You said kind of autopilot, which reminds me of what we were just talking about before the show started. <laughs> yeah, you got a yeah, new yeah. sports car yeah, yeah. that kind of just runs really, really yeah, well. Yeah, and and yeah. you kind of you need to, to stick around and run just as good, right? Yeah. I mean, I actually, I mean, I look forward to the the annual wellness checkup. I really do. To hear some good news, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, and even if there's a little shakiness in it, I'm glad to hear that too. Yeah. Well, yeah. then you can get. Uh, I mean, knowledge is power, right? Don? Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I want to talk about this stereotype. We talk about men kind of being stubborn, and, and we weren't surprised when Jack pointed to his wife saying she's the one who kind of <laughs> leads the way and making making sure that you get into the doctor. Um, is, is that true? Do you you really find that to be the case, Dr. McCray? Are, are, are we yeah. moving a little bit to where now men who are living longer mm -hmm. lives are saying, yeah. hey, I want to live well? So I think pre-pandemic, pre actually, it did feel a little bit true at times, and that um, it was it was infrequent that a man would come to establish care unless he had a health concern or had gotten married, and yes, this is a stereotype, but gotten married and his partner uh, requested that he get a doctor and start seeing the doctor. Um, but then once the pandemic really started, I, I started to see a lot more men who realized that their health was important and they didn't have a primary care provider and they really wanted to um, have someone that knew them well in the, the event that they got sick. And that's really kind of spanned all ages. I'm an internist, so I take care of adults. So from young men mm -hmm. who just have turned 18 to men in their 80s and 90s are really now focusing on how to take care of themselves and stay healthy. And I love making it a family affair. You know, mm -hmm. everybody's on it top is, of each other and everybody knows what's going on. So you know some of those good questions to ask. Uh, so Becky and Jack, we, we know we talk about personal things with our doctors. How long did it take for you to feel comfortable uh, speaking with your doctor and asking those questions. Uh, you know, I, I didn't find it to be a problem. A no. lot, a lot depends on the doctor. Sure. Uh, and and uh, you know, right away, I, I felt like the, the my doctor really knew what she was talking about, mm -hmm. and she talked in a language that I understood. You know, practical and it's useful stuff. So. It was pretty quick. Right. Thank you. Well, she also discovered, she had told me to go in and have this checked by a dermatologist. And uh, I, there was some cancer, and so it was m removed successfully. And I think that's wonderful that I can depend on someone to see my whole body and notice when there's a difference. To see something mm -hmm. that you don't see and mm -hmm. having that rapport with somebody. Like, you can right. remember, hey, I didn't see that last time. Yeah. Let's get mm -hmm. that checked yeah. out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, so, Dr. McCray, what, what's the risk of not having these wellness exams, not doing this regularly? We talk about putting this on the calendar, making it a special date, just like we make mm -hmm. birthdays and Father's Day, uh, and never to miss it. So the benefit of a wellness exam is that then we're entirely focused on the things that that aren't necessarily coming to the surface. So we're gonna look at your blood pressure. We're gonna see what cancer screenings or vaccines you might need. Whereas if you come in for a reason, like back pain or constipation or something like that, that visit's gonna be really focused on those symptoms. When we're really focusing on wellness, it's a good opportunity to set back and make sure that we cover everything. Um, so by missing or not doing your wellness exams, we're trying to squeeze in some of that screening or wellness or guidelines into other visits and sometimes things maybe get missed or we don't catch on to things until they're too late. And you talked about the screening and the guidelines mm -hmm. and we know we're gonna be sitting at the table hopefully with our, our fathers, our grandfathers this weekend. So I mean, what should we be asking them about? I know like with my dad, he loves to go get his wellness exams because he loves to come and brag to me about how perfect, <laughs> yes. he's like a specimen, yeah. 76, he's so perfect. Um, which, is, which is always like music to my ears as a daughter. Uh, but anything we should be just opening up the conversation about. Yeah, I think that one, just having a sort of a family sense of it's important to go to the doctor and have a doctor that you trust and have a good relationship with um, can go a long way to keeping you and your family healthy. And then I think when you're sitting around talking about wellness exams with your family, it's, it's the family history that guides a lot of these. Mm -hmm. When do we start colon cancer screening? When do we start testing for prostate cancer? Those sorts of things. And so trying to find out you know, wh what your family's real history is. And one of the things that people maybe don't think about is in colon cancer screening, if your family members have had polyps on their colonoscopy, that actually affects your risk as well and when we would start doing colonoscopies. And so people don't generally talk about their colonoscopies at the dinner table most of the time, but, but asking. Oh, why you know, not? Yeah. At this point, um, I mean, there's you know, the worst talk at the table. Exactly, exactly. But how did that colonoscopy go and did you have any polyps? And then bringing that information back to your doctor because they may want to do your colonoscopy earlier than you thought. 
So, mm -hmm. Jack and Becky, you, you have, we saw the picture of your large family and you're really quite a great example to them. Do you talk to your children, um, your daughters and son-in-laws about taking care of their health? Yes, uh, our son, who uh, Robert, has a, a rare disease and he was diagnosed at 21. And so we know that you have to be checking on your body constantly. And his symptoms were just tiredness and soreness and roving uh, arthritic pain. And it ended up, it's a lifetime mm -hmm. disease. And doctors are some of the most wonderful people in the world. I mean, if you can't trust your doctor, <laughs> then it's, it's really hard. You know. yeah. so Find that, a new doctor. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Shop around. It's okay mm -hmm. to ask questions, mm -hmm. and as we always say, get those second opinions. So, mm -hmm. Becky, how do you, how do you and Jack prepare to go into a wellness visit each each year? Do you have a list of questions? Do you kind of go head to toe and think, what do I need to ask about? That's kind of what it is. It's pretty. We we are not yeah, planners I just, yeah, I on just, that, except <clears> for when we go to vacation. What, what's <laughs> nice is, is what's nice is. I show up. Yeah, okay? that's that's the and key. and the doctor has my medical history there, okay. And quite frankly, I've forgotten, you know, a lot of the stuff that I've had and been through. And you know, it's it's really good, you know, to to have someone who who knows the system knows everything and you go through it. So, so that's good. And yeah. showing up is key. And you just hope they don't find anything that w was missing and that might be a serious illness. Well, you that know, brings me a, to a question well, for Dr. McRae. Yeah. yeah, it's just when you're gathering this information and mm -hmm. you do find something like you did with Becky, something suspicious and, and needing to get this checked out, uh, what are those steps and how do you talk with patients about that to, to kind of ease their fears? Yeah, so I think part of it is, is really kind of going through the whole system, seeing if anybody has, an, if, if a patient has any symptoms that maybe they don't think about um, that would be concerning to me. And then I use that, that C word concern. I am concerned about this you know, spot on your face or I'm concerned about your abdominal pain or your weight loss or something like that. And then that is my sort of way to start talking about, I think we need to do something more about this, either some lab work or have you see a specialist or imaging yeah. or something like that. Not necessarily to be alarmed. Yeah, but again, yes. a concern, let's get it checked yeah. out and find out. Yeah. Jack, were you gonna say something? Oh, I, I was just going to say that uh, when I'm when I come, I'm okay if, if they find something. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, that's the purpose. Is you know, if I <clears throat> if I have a problem, I want to take care of it. Mm -hmm. And now medical care is really getting good. Yeah. You know, the the treatments. You know, they, they usually work. There's it helps. It helps, and I like that. Yeah, I you, like it. It's there for you. To <clears throat> it is lives. there. Yes, it is there. And, yeah. And Dr. McRae, just and it's it's a good problem to have, but people are living longer. <laughs> yeah. So what advice do you have for people to say, you know, it's not, you know, it, you don't just fall off on your exams. You got to go for the long haul because if you're going to be around a long time, let's do it right. Yeah. So I think um, if you need medications, taking those medications and if you don't like how the medications make you feel or you don't understand them, let your doctor know. Talk to your doctor about that because we, we generally don't want to give somebody medications unless they need it. So there's there's a reason we want you to take your cholesterol medicine or try to get your blood pressure under control, even if you don't feel poorly at that moment, um, to, to stay active. So uh, we arthritis or just fatigue as we all get older we all feel maybe a little less a little less great or a little less useful but you want to try to stay active you want to try to stay independent as much as you can because that's going to keep you healthier for longer and I think another important thing is um, keeping your brain engaged in social interaction. So major risk factors for kind of cognitive decline and dementia are social isolation and um, not, I guess, using your brain on a regular basis. So interacting with friends and family or joining interest groups, doing you know word searches, those sorts of things can actually be a really important part to maintaining that brain health long term too. I love how you brought up medication and a society that is medicated oftentimes. Mm -hmm. It's nice to say, hey, let them know, you get prescribed something, let them know how it's working, if it's working, mm -hmm. if it's not working, we'll either change it up or stop it. Exactly, yeah, Love I wanna that. know that. Love mm -hmm. that. Yeah. So be sure to ask your questions. Nothing's off limits, get them in, use chat, or you can uh, use the chat on YouTube and Facebook. You can tweet us, of course, or email the Medical News Network. The information is right there on your screen. We're gonna get a quick check on the COVID account. Dr. Dana Hawkinson is out today. But I got him covered. Today we have 15 total inpatients, four are active COVID cases, zero in the ICU, and zero on ventilators. Do we have any reporter questions? 
Well, let's get to our viewer questions. We've always got good ones. What if you do not have a primary care physician? Does going to like a minute clinic just for a basic wellness exam, does that provide the same level of care? What should you do? I, my opinion would be no. I don't want to denigrate anyone who maybe works in those clinics, but I think an important part is, is I know my patients really well, and by seeing them every year, twice a year over time, I learn their history and I know how they are when they're well, and so then I, know, I can see when they're sick. And so a minute clinic isn't going to have your comprehensive medical history. They're not going to know you as well, and so they're just going to be going based off of maybe your age and your BMI and your gender, and not so much those kind of richer details in your history that might affect what we need to do. Well, and you make a good point. Our, our minute clinic friends, they are there, and our doctors and those experts are there for, to it serve a really, really important purpose, yeah. but not necessarily to know those long-term long -term yes. health needs. Yeah. As far as screenings go, are there any screenings that fall off for people as they age, like mammograms, mm -hmm. colonoscopies? So um, there are a lot of societies with a lot of guidelines, but mm -hmm. generally using the United States Preventative Healthcare Task Force guidelines, um, for our women, we oftentimes stop doing um, cervical cancer screening at age 65 because the incidence of new cervical cancer after 65 goes down. Mammograms, um, colon cancer screening, we generally stop at um, 75, unless someone is very, very healthy and we think that they might have 10 plus more years of life, and then we would have a conversation about continuing to do those things. You know, some of the screenings are can be invasive, like a colonoscopy. Uh, so you want to make sure that if you're doing it, it makes sense and that um, the screening itself isn't doing harm. But if you find something early and, and that person would want to follow through on treatment, then that might make sense to continue doing beyond those sort of maybe stop at 75 ages. So let's get some advice here. Here's a question. My parents don't do yearly wellness visits. How do you suggest we bring that up to our parents? We know we're going to have a good opportunity this weekend. I'll start, Jack, with you. Yeah. What might be a good way to approach somebody? I mean, I think it's like talking to anybody about about a sensitive topic. Uh, you know, I, I I don't find it difficult, you know, to, right. to somebody to say, hey, let's, you can get a checkup and, and under Medicare, you know, there isn't an, there's not an ex, uh, expense, you know, to, to, to have a wellness checkup. So it's kind of a no-brainer, right? Really. But, mm -hmm. but Becky, you know, not everybody. Let's be honest. Parents don't want to hear their kids tell them what to do. That's true. So how do we do it? How <laughs> they, do we? My kids never wanted me to tell them. What to do, but, <laughs> you know, it's like leave me alone. I've been yeah, doing this for decades. Yeah. I, I got this. Um, and look at me. You know, a lot of people say, "Hey, I've had no problems. I've had no health problems. You don't have a problem until you have one." So, um, how do we? kind of tap around that. I think we just have to not worry about it and just address it immediately and say, look, people are, you are getting close to death and you don't want it to be a hard death. Mm -hmm. And if you're being checked annually by a doctor who has kept up with your health, then it gives you an advantage. And it's, 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 and it's also somebody that you feel like cares for you when you go there. Mm -hmm. And they're looking at your whole being and, um, you know, I was grateful when I didn't have to have a pap smear anymore and grateful when I didn't have to have a colonoscopy. I didn't know that at 75 I would be so excited. But <laughs> it pays off. It it older, does, doesn't it? it? Does. <laughs> you know, but I, it's just nice to have that. It's, it's like insurance. Mm -hmm. You know, it's... it's um, yeah. And but, we've yeah. Had, we have moved a lot earlier in our marriage. And so we have had different doctors, and even in, at KU we've had, to, and we are so grateful to have you. And I think yeah. in, yeah. sometimes it's good to change doctors, you know, just because then it's a new person looking. At you. And, that, and that could be a challenge because you yeah. know, when you move around, it's like, oh gosh, I gotta yeah. find a new, I gotta find a new Amazing. provider. Some people go, eh, and they, you know, they put it off for a year or two. So <laughs> it's re that's why we go back to that annual. But I, I, I like that advice. Just yeah. talk about it. And yeah. It shows that the doctors care, but when your family talks to you about it, it shows how much mm -hmm. they love you mm -hmm. and care. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, I, I just turned 80, and uh, yeah. uh, when I reached that goal, I thought, you know, this is, I always had it in my mind, that, that's, that's fine, I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm ready, I can check out. <laughs> but then I started thinking, you know what, 90 doesn't look so bad. It doesn't. Uh, and just because of, because of the health care. It really it is. No, and it, you're, you get confidence in, in the ability, you know, to have a, have a good life. I love how you said that. 
And then, again, if you're just joining us, he was just talking about this brand new slick sports car. <laughs> he's, <laughs> he's trying to figure out. So I go, I think you're, you've you got another, a good, another good decade in you, right? Maybe. You, yeah. Hey. I hope so. And do it in okay. style. I love yeah, that. Yeah, there, there you go. Should you fast before you have a wellness visit? That's a question. It, it depends. If you haven't had labs drawn and you think you need labs, you can fast. Your... Don't let fasting be a barrier though. If you can't fast, if it makes you lightheaded or it just doesn't work out with your schedule, just come as you are. And if we need to get labs, we can get them, even a cholesterol panel, and interpret that without, um, without you fasting. So it, if you can, it's great. If you can't, come anyway, it's, it's fine. Come as you are. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Dr. McCray has talked a lot about physical activity. I'll start with you, Becky. What's your favorite thing to do just to get some sunshine and get, get the blood going? Well, two things. I like to ride bicycles with my husband, and we do that frequently. We have e-bikes, and I go birding, and that, that in, requires you to walk and, you know, use your banana, you know, so you do a lot of walking with that. So I Birding. Love, mm -hmm. Interesting. Where do you do that? Just Well, yesterday I went with a friend. We went to Dunn Ranch up north, which is close to the Iowa border. And then oh, you nice. walk in the prairies, and it's, it's just... Uh, a, a way to look at life that is absolutely beautiful and fascinating uh, and wonderful. That's good for the, the soul yes. and the brain. Mm -hmm. I love mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. All right, Jack, what do you do besides riding the bike? Uh, Following her around mainly on the bike. that, and I, you know, and I play a little golf. Okay. And, and uh, you know, I mean, yeah, walk a little bit. I, I'm trying to do some weights. Good. You know, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm not. Uh, I got to work on that. Oh. So yeah, I, yeah. I, every day, you know, I want every week. I want to get some exercise, 45 minutes a day. Yeah. You know, something. It doesn't have to be too strenuous, but mm -hmm. just get just moving. Something. And get don't moving. Even, don't yes. even have to show up at the gym. Just get mm -hmm. out and about. Yes, yes. I want to get our takeaways today. And uh, Dr. McCray, let's start with you. What do you want folks to take away from our, our chat today? I think that um, <clears throat> I would say just, just if you don't have a primary care doctor, please try to find a primary care doctor. We are there to help you, and we want to try to find things early so that we can help take care of those health risk factors before they become a problem. Manage your cholesterol before you develop heart disease, those sorts of things. And I think another thing is when you then finally go to primary care doctor, sometimes you get a list like this. We give you a to-do list of all these different colonoscopy and bone density scan and all these labs and things like that. You can ask us to prioritize that for you so you don't feel like you have to do 27 things in a week. And we'll, you know, I'll let you, my patients know, okay, I want you to do these three things in the next three months and then after that, you know, get these other screening tests or whatever done when you can. And then that, that I think makes it a little less intimidating um, to kind of get started with your health if, if you're not trying to do so many things all at once. Yeah, that really makes sense. I could see a big list like ending up in the junk drawer or something mm -hmm. if, you, if it's too just overwhelming. Just too, too many things, <laughs> yeah. Just take it yeah. one, one screening at a time. Uh, Jack and Becky, what do you want folks to take away from, from this story, from you as a couple? You know, I would say that getting back to wellness checkups, it's all pluses. I mean, I don't see the minus in it. I really don't. You just have, you just have to show up. Yeah. <laughs> and then and away you go with and it. And you even said no minus, even if something negative shows yeah, well, up. Yeah, well, in a way, a that's, that's a plus. That's actually a plus. You, know, you can get it worked on. So, Becky, what's the final takeaway today? Just be grateful that we have good doctors that want to see their patients every year and will let you know if there's an issue. And... It's just, uh, I agree with Jack, it's a no-brainer, you know, and we're, and KU has helped us get through this yeah. and find Jennifer McRae, our mm -hmm. doctor, you know, and it's not that we went on that journey alone, and so that's really good. Good. Well, we True. want to keep you around for the, mm -hmm. all those grandkids and grand, mm -hmm. grandkids, great-grandkids, yes. all the things. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Happy Father's Day. Thank this you. Weekend. Appreciate Happy Father's it. Day. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great one. And Thank thanks you. to all of our guests. And all of you have a great Father's Day <laughs> weekend, and we'll see you back here Monday at 8. Coming up Monday on the Morning Medical Update, 11 million Americans are caring for loved ones with Alzheimer's. I'm Jessica Lovell. On the next Morning Medical Update, we revisit the emotional journey of Alexis Del Cid, taking the next step in giving her dad the right memory care that he needs, Monday at 8. Subscribe to our Morning Medical Update and open mics with Dr. Stites podcast. Now everywhere podcasts are available.